Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Starfield. My name is Camel. You will have to excuse my voice. While I do feel fine, I went to a wedding, slept for 19 hours, and now my voice sounds like the voice of a very dry biscuit. Not too sure what's happening, but we will get through it. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to easily scan any planet or moon and share all of my tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. As you can see here, I've fully surveyed 60 planets, which isn't insane, but after doing it 60 times, you do pick up a couple of things. So I'm gonna share all of my knowledge with you to make your scanning and surveying life much easier and most importantly, more efficient. Scanning moons and planets can actually be very relaxing, chill, laid back exploration activity. You can go out, explore all the nooks and crannies of the thousands of planets and moons that Starfield has to offer. And along the way, you will get a whole bunch of experience and it's actually very lucrative as the scan data is very valuable. You can see here some survey data is worth 4,500 credits and it goes all the way up to 40,000 credits with a couple in between. And I'll also show you the best place to sell your survey data as well so you will get the most out of your hard work. But to some, myself included, when I started playing, the idea of landing on a planet with 11 fauna and 7 flora and 8 resources and 3 traits, well, it can definitely seem very daunting and even off-putting. So I'm not just going to talk the talk, as at the end of the video, we will be doing a real-time entire 100% planet scan, just like one of the ones we mentioned above, with tons of fauna, tons of flora, tons of resources, and tons of traits, as so that you can see just how easy it actually is. And I'll talk you along the whole Whole way through so you know exactly what's happening and why I'm doing it. Now if this kind of stuff interests you, my other Starfield videos can be found down in the description via the playlist link. Down there you can also find all of my social media links, be sure to help me out and check them out after the video. And if you have any other tips and tricks for scanning and surveying planets for myself and everyone else, be sure to let us all know down in the comments. Now there are also a couple of skills to make scanning and surveying a lot easier, but we will run through those later on, as if scanning planets and moons is new to you, you probably won't have any of those skills leveled up, right? So we'll run through all of the basics without skills in mind to make this more of an entry level guide to begin with, and get into the deeper stuff. Deeper in the video, funnily enough. But without further hesitation, let's get you turned into a scanning master. So firstly, when it comes to scanning slash surveying a planet, there are four categories that we will be dealing with. The fauna, these being all of the animals, the aliens, the creatures, the monsters, and the like. There is also the flora, that being all of the plants and such. Thirdly, there is the resources. These are, of course, the actual literal resources that can be found on said cosmic body, like iron and water. And finally is the traits. These are naturally occurring points of interest and can be tricky to find, but I will explain how to easily find them a little later on. Now, when you hover over a moon or a planet in the star map, it will show you over on the left-hand side how many of each of these four categories are present on that particular planet or moon for you to scan. And when you're actually standing on the planet or moon and bring up your scanner, it will show you your current progress over on the left-hand side as well, as so you can more easily keep track of how you're going. Now, some planets and moons don't have any fauna, any flora, any resources, or any traits, and they cannot be landed on. These are any planet that are labeled as a gas giant or an ice giant, and any moon that is labeled as an asteroid and is basically shaped like a potato, well, none of these three can be landed on. All of these gas giants, ice giants, and potato moons will have nothing show up in their stats. So if you're unsure if you can land on it or not, well, this is a quick way to know that you can't land on it if it just has nothing show up at all. But despite having nothing to offer at face value, if we actually go into said planet or moon's orbit, well, we will see that we can actually still scan it from our spaceship. And if we do scan a gas giant, an ice giant, or an asteroid moon, well, we will actually get the survey data for it. And while this will be the least valuable survey data, with a value of 4,500 credits, that's still a pretty serious sum of credits and only takes seconds to acquire. So you can snoop around solar systems, traveling to gas giants and ice giants and potato moons, to scan them from their orbit and make quick bucks with ease and, quite frankly, in a comically short amount of time. 
Now stepping up just a little bit, there are plenty of planets and moons that don't have any fauna or flora or any traits and have just two or three resources. Well, these can be landed on and in a minute or so, you can scan the two resources and you're done. You've got the survey data, again, very quickly. So these are just some beginner ways that you can make some very fast money scanning and surveying. But when it comes to planets and moons that do have a large collection of things to be scanned and surveyed, when we do get our feet on the ground and are ready to begin wandering around scanning stuff, well, there are a few things that you should know. Firstly, I would suggest walking around with the scanner up as anything yet to be surveyed or completed will be highlighted in blue and anything you've already collected the data for will be highlighted in green. So you know that you've done that already and you don't need to bother with it. Now, a great little detail and pro tip missed by many is that actually harvesting resources and minerals counts as scanning them. Along with this, harvesting resources from any plant or killing any animal also counts as scanning them. So you don't have to try and scan an animal as they're charging at you or bring up a scanner after a battle and scan all their corpses as simply by killing them you've scanned them or when it comes to plants simply by picking their fruit or nuts or berries or whatever you've scanned them and by mining a mineral you've scanned it also so technically you could actually scan all of the fauna all of the flora and all of the resources on a planet without ever actually pulling up your scanner but of course, I'll suggest using the scanner just so you can actually see what's what and how you're progressing. Now, when it comes to resources, you don't even need to find a resource node to scan it, as you will quite often see these large areas on the ground highlighted in a particular resources designated color. This highlighted area is actually for outpost building, as if you build an extractor in the highlighted area, it will harvest that resource. But from the scanner, you can just click on the highlighted area on the ground and it will count as scanning that particular resource. This is very handy as obviously finding a big highlighted area on the ground is much easier than finding an actual resource node. So be sure to use that as you can collect all of the data for resources much faster this way. Now you can also enter outpost building mode and it will actually show you in the top left all of the nearby resources that are within the outpost beacons range. This can be a quick and handy way to see what's actually around you. Now all of the resources on any given planet only need to be scanned once to have their data collected. And a pro tip, if you do want to run around mining stuff with the cutter, well, if you have the cutter out and hold down the left trigger on a controller or the right button on the mouse, this will actually like supercharge the cutter. And when we do fire it, it will shoot out a much more powerful beam that harvests materials seven times faster and it uses half as much charge to harvest the same resource. So that is a very handy tip that I want everyone to know. This will make your life much, much easier. And if you do want the unique orange cutter that I'm using in the video, check the card above for that full guide. So with resources out of the way, now when it comes to fauna and flora, that being the animals and the plants, each type will have to be scanned eight times. So you will need to find eight different specimens of each plant and animal species on said planet or moon. Each time you scan one, you will collect between 12 and 13% of each thing's data. So after two scans, you're on 25%, after four scans, you're on 50%, and after eight scans, you're on 100%. You've collected all the data for that particular species. Now, once you have scanned a particular plant or animal, it can't be scanned again, as it will go from a blue highlight to being a solid blue. This is to let you know that you've already scanned this one and you can't get any more out of it. So again, make sure to have the scanner up and keep an eye out for anything with a blue outline. That means you haven't collected all its data and you can scan whatever that thing is. Anything that's solid blue or green, don't worry about it. You're done with it. Now, some plants and animals are tricky to find or simply just spawn less frequently than others. So again, I'd suggest having your scanner up quite often as you can spot that flora and fauna highlighted in blue from a mile off. But another very important thing to know is that some planets and moons have multiple biomes. So if you've been running around a forest for a while and seem to have scanned all of the fauna and flora with nothing new to discover, but you're not even halfway done with finding all that the planet has to offer, well, you will probably need to head to a different biome to find plants and animals unique to those environments that cannot be found in the forest. Now to do this, you will need to bring up the planet map and click on different spots on the planet. You will see over on the right hand side, it actually tells you what the biome of that exact spot that you've selected is. 
and it will also tell you what percentage of the fauna and flora that you have discovered that can be found in that particular biome. Now, some plants and animals can be found in all of the biomes, and sometimes they can only be found in one biome. So sometimes you'll see that you've partially completed the data scanning in a particular biome, even though you haven't been to that biome before. Now, knowing this is very handy as you can click around the planet or moon's surface and specifically pinpoint areas that still hold things for you to discover. And if you are unsure if you've completed the biome you're currently in, you can open the planet map and just click where your character is currently standing. This will show you the percentage that you've completed in that biome. You can also just bring up your scanner and it will say on the left hand side for both fauna and flora biome completed. Now of course if it says biome completed or on the planet map it says 100% biome completed well guess what you're done with that biome and you can move on to another one. And just a quick tip if you are on a planet and you're skipping from biome to biome you don't actually have to head back to your ship to do this. You can just be out wherever you are open the planet map click on a spot and fast travel there. This will just take you straight there and it will load your ship there as well. So you can save a bit of time not going back to your ship every time you want to travel somewhere. You can just do it whenever you want. Now, another thing to keep in mind, particularly when looking for fauna, is any flying creatures can be scanned from very, very far away, unlike their ground dwelling friends. So if you see anything zipping around the sky or bobbing through the air, even if it does seem quite a way away, give it a scan and you should be good. This is obviously much easier than having to try and get right underneath them or shoot at them so they come down to you. You can scan them from a really far away. Now the other fauna trick that sends a lot of players walking in circles for hours to no avail is the aquatic wildlife. Some planets and moons have oceans or massive bodies of water, let's not get technical. Now while not all of the oceans contain life, some of them do contain life. So if you're wandering around and you just can't seem to find those last few fauna and the planet or moon that you're on has an ocean, well, it's a pretty good bet that they're in the ocean. So just travel to the coast and suss out the water by the shoreline with a scanner up as you might just find a couple of sneaky water dwellers hiding in there. Fair warning though, I do have some tips for this as the coast can actually be tricky to find. When you bring up the planet map, you will need to select a piece of land right next to the ocean. This is most easily done when you zoom in as far as you can, as it will give you much more playroom when trying to pick the exact spot right next to the ocean. Now, as you click around, you'll see the biome come up, but eventually you'll see the biome come up and then in brackets, it will say coast. This is what you want or even what you need. So once you've got a location select that says coast after the biome, what you want to do is travel there. Now, when you arrive, it seems like you're just surrounded by land. I'm not sure why it does this, but for whatever reason, when you travel to a coastline, you travel near the coastline and then have to walk for a couple of minutes to get to the actual water. Now, trying to figure out which direction the water is, is pretty confusing at first. You can look around and look for sand colored hills. This will probably be the sand of the beach. Or you can look where the terrain goes the lowest on the horizon. That's probably dipping down towards the ocean. But I don't know if this is how the game actually works, but I did test this a whole bunch of times and every time this is what happened for me. When you land at a coastal location, the ship will be facing the water. And when you hop out of your ship, your character will be facing the water. So when in doubt, just look where your ship is facing and go straight ahead. This will lead you to the water. Again, not 100% confirmed, but I tested this five or six times and every time, my ship just so happened to be pointing exactly at the ocean. So once you've got your bearings, just walk in that direction and you will eventually get to the beach and you will hit the ocean. Now, fair warning, be aware that some oceans are very harmful to we humans. So suss out the water, dip your toe in before you dive headfirst and get dissolved in an ocean of acid. Now, once you're at the shoreline and looking into the water, bring up the scanner and any aquatic wildlife will be highlighted in blue. Now, much like flying creatures, you can scan these watery friends from a very far distance. So you don't actually have to get into the water and swim around to try and scan these things. I will say, however, that I often find the aquatic wildlife to be fairly spread out. So you'll probably have to walk up and down the coast for a couple of minutes to find all of the fish friends that you're looking for. Now, with air type Pokemon and water type Pokemon out of the way, most planets with fauna also have three main types of fauna. There are the predators, the hunters, 
There is the prey, there's usually some kind of herd animal, and there are the scavengers. Oftentimes you'll stumble across some kind of pack of herbivore-like creatures being absolutely destroyed and run down by something more aggressive, some kind of carnivore creature. Both of these are pretty easy to spot as they are usually large and usually in groups and they're usually seen running around frantically in packs. Also worth noting, if you do stumble upon a big pile of dead animals, you can actually scan the dead corpses to collect their survey data as well. You don't have to be the one that killed them. Now, while the predators and the prey are pretty easy to find, the scavengers can be a bit trickier. So if you do find a bunch of dead creatures or you kill a bunch of creatures and end up with a pile of dead creatures, if you wait around for a little bit, the scavengers will actually show up to feed on the remains. These scavengers are often quite little, like they're little bug-like creatures that can sometimes be otherwise difficult to find. But if you don't want to wait around at a pile of dead animals for scavengers to show up, a good tip that I found is to listen for them. For example, on this planet I was struggling to find these little beetle dudes as they were hidden in the grass. They were really short and the grass was quite thick and the grass was taller than they were. So even though I was probably surrounded by them, I couldn't really see them. Even with the scanner up, they were hard to spot, but they made a lot of noise. So if you're walking around and hear notably squeaky insect noises coming from the ground around your feet, well, look down and you'll likely find a gang of little scavengers that you would have otherwise missed. So, now that we know how to find all of the fauna, all of the flora, and all of the resources on a planet, let's talk about traits. Some planets and moons have no traits. Some have one, some have two, and the most that I've personally seen is three. There might be moons and planets with more, I just haven't seen them yet. Now, traits for me was initially the hardest thing to find and scan as I didn't know what I was looking for. I would just wander around randomly hoping to run across a trait, which of course led me to just aimlessly walking around and getting frustrated that these damn traits weren't just spawning in front of me. But after fully scanning 60 planets, what I have found is that all of the traits will always show up at a natural location or a life science location. So when you land on a planet, you bring up your scanner and you scan the horizon. When you do this, you'll see a bunch of icons pop up. If you hover over one of the icons and click A, or whatever A is on a keyboard, it will give you a little bit more information about that location that you're pointing at. It could be an outpost, it could be a structure, it could be a cave, or it could be a natural location or a life science location. These last two, natural and life science, are what you want to keep an eye out for if you're looking for traits. So when you land on a planet, look around for natural and life science, and whichever one is closest to you, head in that direction, and I guarantee you will run into a trait. Very infrequently, there are natural formations or life science sign formations that aren't traits, but most of the time, like 99% of the time, these natural locations and life sign locations are traits. So walk in that direction and when you get there, you'll find some kind of interesting geological goings-ons with a large section that is highlighted in blue when you bring the scanner up. Just like everything else, with the scanner up, click it and you will scan it. Now some traits at their location, there will be one thing to be scanned or there will be two things to be scanned or there will be three things to be scanned. From memory, the most I've ever seen is three. This is no problem, you just need to look around and click on the blue things. And if you're unsure of how you're going scanning said trait, it will tell you how many scannable parts there are to said trait and show you your progress as well. So once you arrive, of course, scan the scannable section or sections of the location and you will discover that trait. And I've seen scanning traits give between 100 and 300 experience upon scanning completion. So that's a nice way to get some extra XP, along with all the experience you'll get from scanning the flora fauna and resources. Now when you do find one of these trait locations, it's always worth having a look around as they often have some kind of rock pile or dung pile, which sometimes contains very little loot, but sometimes they contain a lot of loot. So given you went to all the effort of walking out here, you might as well reap the full benefits. Now, unlike fauna and flora, I personally have not noticed any traits being tied to specific biomes. As in my experience, I usually find all of the traits, even when there's three of them, in a single biome. I land in one spot, look around, walk to the three natural life science spots, 
and get all three traits. But sometimes you will land in a spot and scan the horizon and there aren't any natural or life sign locations showing up in the nearby area. So of course, in these cases, just move to a different spot. Now it is worth noting that if a planet or moon has more than one trait, these multiple traits will always be different. So if you find a natural location and see it off in the distance and it's a giant blue crystal thing sticking out of the horizon, well, you head over there, you discover it is in fact a trait, you scan it, you turn around, and you see another big blue crystal thing off on the horizon. Well, don't bother going there, as all it will provide is the same trait that you've already just discovered, the big blue crystal thing. So when looking for multiple traits, keep an eye out for any unique natural formations that you haven't seen yet, and avoid the ones that you have seen and scanned. So while it might take a couple of minutes to find all of the traits on a planet, just keep an eye out for any natural locations and life sign locations. And if you do want to get all the traits, I find the easiest is to go to a flat biome, like a desert or a savanna or a frozen ice field or something. This way there's no trees and hills and mountains in the way. You can very clearly look around and see the trait. Even if it's quite far away, you can see some weird geological thing sticking out of the horizon. This will help you avoid going to the same trait twice, as you can literally see what it is from quite a distance. Now, if you do have traits to go out and discover, I think it is often worth heading out to find the traits straight away, as on the way to them, you can scan the fauna, flora, and resources on your journey, maximizing the usage of your time and killing four birds with one sojourn. Now, it is also worth noting that I do believe, this isn't confirmed, but I have got a lot of survey data slates, and I have noticed that the value of a survey data slate seems to be determined by how many traits the planet or moon had. If it had no traits, it will have a value of 4,500. If it had one trait, it will have a value of 9,000. If it had two traits, it will have a value of 24,000. And if it has three traits, it will have a value of 40,000 credits. Now this huge ramp in value as the traits go up might just make you inclined to seek out planets and moons that actually do have more traits rather than, you know, avoiding them. Especially now that we know how easy it is to find traits. So now that we know how to best find all of the fauna, flora, resources, and traits with our feet on the ground, let's talk about the skills that will help you in your scanning journey. All of these skills can be found in the science skill tree. And to be very clear and not mislead anyone, each skill tree has skill tiers. Tier one skills at the top can be acquired at any time. Tier two skills in the second row require you to have already spent at least four skills in that particular skill tree to unlock. Tier three skills in the third row require you to have already spent at least eight skill points in that particular skill tree to unlock. And finally, tier four skills in the very bottom row require you to have already spent at least 12 skill points in that particular skill tree to unlock. So this is something to keep in mind as if you think, oh, that skill will be handy. Well, it might require you to sink a ton of skill points into that science skill tree to unlock it. So just keep that in mind as so that you aren't disappointed when you go to grab a skill and you can't. So firstly, the only tier one skill that will help us on our scanning journey is surveying. This will add a zoom function while the scanner is up, which can be handy for spotting things off in the distance. But it will also increase the range at which we can scan things from. The default range is 10 meters, and for every rank we go up, it adds 10 meters. So when we get to rank four, the scanning range will now be 50 meters. Now, having a scan range of 50 meters can be very handy for basically scan sniping things opposed to having to get up close and personal with everything to scan it. Next is the tier two skills, the first of which is botany, which will allow you to harvest more resources from flora, which is great. But more importantly, it will also increase the amount of data collected from scanning plants. So with no points in this skill, as we know, we need to scan eight of a specific plant to fully collect its data. With rank one, this will drop down to seven scans. With rank two, this will drop down to six scans. With rank three, it will go to five scans. And with rank four, it will drop down to only four scans to 100% collect a plant's data. So with rank four, you will collect 25% of the data of said plant per scan. 
literally halving the required scans, which of course halves the time that you need to invest in scanning plants. So this is hugely beneficial. Next is scanning. This skill will allow you to detect uncommon, rare, exotic, and unique inorganic resources on the surface of a planet or moon. Inorganic resources being things that are not organic, funnily enough, like iron and helium. Now this skill is specific to the planetary scan that you can do from the planet map. So when you do scan a planet here, it will show you the general locations of specific inorganic resources by highlighting areas in that resource's color. This could be handy to use if you're struggling to find a particular resource or on the hunt for a particular resource. But I will admit with that said, I don't think this skill is absolutely necessary as I've never had to rely on this feature to find a particular resource. So you may or may not want to put points into this. Now the next skill is Zoology. This is the exact same thing as Botany, but instead of for Flora, it is for Fauna, for all the creatures. And much like Botany, at rank 4, you will only have to scan 4 of each creature to collect all of its data. So again, this is very handy and will halve your time scanning animals. And the final skill that will be handy for scanning and surveying is the tier 3 skill, Astrophysics. With rank 1, you can scan the moons of your current planet, and you have a 10% chance to discover a trait when scanning. Rank 2, you can scan any planet or moon within the system, and you have a 20% chance to discover a trait when scanning. With rank 3, you can scan any planet or moon within 16 light years of where you're standing, and you have a 30% chance to discover a trait when scanning. And with rank 4, you can now scan any planet or moon within 30 light years, and you have a 50% chance to discover a trait when scanning. Now scanning in this sense is again the planetary scanning, so this skill is super handy. Being able to scan any planet or moon within 30 light years is great, especially for farming those gas giants, ice giants, and potato moons that we spoke of earlier. But the real benefit here is at rank 4, having a 50% chance to discover a trait just by scanning a planet from the star map. This is super helpful, especially considering that finding the traits can be one of the more time consuming aspects of scanning and surveying planets and moons. So to just get a trait for free in an instant, 50% of the time is absolutely wicked. And in the long run will save you so much time by not having to look for traits by walking around because you got it for free from simply scanning the planet from the map. And also the challenge to increase the ranks of astrophysics require you to scan planets and moons from the star map. So this can be leveled from rank one to rank four in a couple of minutes if you have the skill points available. So this one is super easy to get and super helpful, but it is a tier three skill. So you will have had to have invested at least eight skill points in the science tree already to gain access to it. But in my opinion, this is totally worth it. So, now that you are a scanning god, what do you do with all of this survey data? Well, we sell it of course, but don't sell it to just any old fool willing to buy it. As we can see, despite this survey data being worth 4,500 credits, when we go to sell it, we can only sell it for 717 credits. And to clarify, on my character, I've got the commerce skill maxed out at rank four, allowing me to sell items for 25% more. So this is the best price you can get at any old vendor. Now this huge cut in displayed value versus vendor value is universal across all of the items in the game, but there is one character in Starfield who will buy survey data for more than the standard selling value. In fact, he will buy them for double. And this absolute legend is none other than Vladimir Sol. Now Vladimir is of course part of Constellation and he can either be found on Constellation star station, the Eye, which is in orbit above the planet Jemison, or he can be found within the Lodge in New Atlantis, also on the planet Jemison. Now you will meet Vladimir very early on in the main quest line, so if you haven't gotten up to that point, I was just getting there. Now when we first meet Vladimir Sol, we'll have a good chat with him and eventually we will see this option come up at the bottom of the dialogue. Your artifact search must be a full-time job. Click on this and after some back and forth conversation, at the top of his dialogue options, we will see there is now, I've got some survey data for you. Click this option and it will open up Vlad as a vendor 
who will only purchase survey data. But get this, as far as I'm aware, he actually has the largest amount of vendor credits of any vendor in Starfield, as he has 20,000 credits. Now, most vendors in Starfield only carry 5,000 credits. Even the Trade Authority usually only carries 11,000 by default. So the fact that Vlad has almost double what the Trade Authority has, well, it's not the only thing being doubled, as Vlad will actually purchase survey data for twice as much as any other vendor. Remember those 4.5k survey data slates that we could only sell for 717 credits to a random vendor? Well, Vlad will buy them for 1434 credits, which is exactly double 717. So you can make quite a lot of very pretty pennies by selling survey data specifically and exclusively to Vladimir, making surveying and scanning all the more enticing. Now, just to quickly clarify, there is some bloke from List in the bar in Sidonia on Mars called Phil Hill. He will also offer to purchase survey data slates. And there's a rumor going around in this kind of Starfield community that Phil Hill is in fact the best person to sell them to. Now, as far as I can tell, this is a big fat fallacy, as he appears to buy survey data for the exact same price that any other random vendor buys them. As we can see, all of these 4.5K survey data slates can be sold to Phil Hill for 717 credits, just like every other vendor. And if we run down the road to the Trade Authority, well, as we can see, they will purchase these same survey data slates for 717. So it turns out that Phil Hill from List is no different to any other vendor. And he's got a measly amount of credits and can't even afford the more expensive slates. So again, my friends, make sure to sell all of your survey data to Vladimir Saul. He will pay double what anyone else will. And he's got 20,000 credits to spare as his default vendor credits absolutely mad and I wish this was something that I knew a long time ago because I've sold a lot of survey data slates to random vendors and missed out on a whole lot of credits. Now you can actually get missions to survey planets but I'm not entirely sure if they are worth it. I guess it's up to you. As if we head into the basement of the lodge in New Atlantis we can find the constellation mission board. From here you can usually pick up a mission asking for you to fully survey a planet or moon. Now, when you accept one of these quests and complete the survey of said planet or moon, you will get some XP for completing the mission and some credits too, but you don't also get the survey data. As we can see here, I completed the mission. I get 150 experience and 1000 credits, but if I look in my inventory, there's no survey data. So it seems that the mission experience and the credit reward is in exchange for the data slate. Now this is fine, but I tested this and loaded a save before I accepted accepted the mission and came and scanned the same moon that the mission had me do. And once I completed it, I got 50 experience, but I also got the data slate, which I could sell to Vlad for 1,434 credits. So when it comes to doing the mission versus not doing the mission, well, I got 150 experience and 1,000 credits for doing the mission. And I got 50 experience and 1434 credits for not doing the mission, but selling the slate to Vlad instead. So it's 100 more experience in favor of doing the mission, but it's 434 more credits in favor of not doing the mission. So I do guess that it boils down to your personal preference, whether you want more XP or you want more credits. But to be honest, 100 XP or 434 credits here and there is not super important, but it is something to keep in mind before you go out smashing these survey quests. Now, there is actually one other way to discover traits on planets, as very infrequently when you're out and about exploring a planet, you can run across a random location that looks like this. It's an abandoned research tower. Now, if you do make your way into one of these locations and fight through 50 enemies and 17 floors of science labs and unlock a door or two using specific terminals, well, we can actually find this computer from which you can download planetary data. When you do this, it will discover one of the traits of whatever planet or moon that you are on. Now, this can be handy if you happen to be here already, but in regards to speed, if you're specifically going into a research tower to discover one of the traits, 
Well, this process is most certainly much slower than if you just found the trait the normal way, which you can do in a couple of minutes. But if you come here, again, it's a huge location, it's very complicated, and there's also, no exaggeration, about 40 to 50 enemies in here. So it might take 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to actually get to the computer and get the trait, where you could have just looked for a life sign or a natural location and got that same trait in a couple of minutes. So I would highly discourage anyone from actively seeking out these towers to get trait data, as even just to get footage of one of these research towers, I had to load onto random spots on the same planet for two hours and I was just zipping around in free cam looking for one of these damn things. So searching for them is a big time sink and even if you do find one, it's like five, six times slower to get the same one trait compared to if you just ran out and found it yourself. However, if you do want to come into the research tower and kill all the enemies and get all the loot while you're here, might as well get the research data. And with that, I cannot think of a single molecule related to planet and moon scanning that we have not covered. So now that we are fully loaded with scanning knowledge and know-how, as promised at the start of the video, I will scan a planet from first arrival to 100% completion in real time so you can see how all of what we talked about in the video is actually applied in action. Now for this, I wanted to find a planet that had the most stuff to be scanned. And I looked at about 50 star systems searching for a moon or a planet that I haven't already been to and had a large number of fauna, flora, resources and traits. And I finally found one a planet called Zeta Ophichu 1 in the Zeta Ophichu star system. I wanted to find the most difficult place that I could as I wanted to make sure to show you that despite talking the talk throughout the video, that we can actually walk the walk too. And hopefully in the process, it will fully dispel the initially daunting task of fully scanning a planet like this. Now, as we can see, Zeta Ophichu 1 has 10 fauna, 10 flora, eight resources and three traits. So with all of the fauna, flora, resources and traits combined, we have a total of 31 things to survey to fully scan this planet. Now Zeta Ophichu 1 also has a ton of different biomes and it has an ocean. So as far as scanning a planet goes, this is about as difficult as it will ever get. Now, just to be clear, I do have the surveying, botany, scanning, zoology and astrophysics skills all maxed out at rank four. So skill wise, my character is totally decked out and ready for this challenge. But without further delay, come along with me as we 100% scan this planet Zeta Ophichu 1, which at face value might seem really scary and it's going to take hours and hours. But hopefully with this literal walkthrough, you will see that scanning and surveying even the most difficult of planets or moons can be quite a breeze. Alrighty, currently in the Lodge New Atlantis and we're going to be traveling to Zeta Ophichu star system. And to Zeta Ophichu 1, the planet. It's the planet I spent hours looking for to basically challenge our scanning and surveying knowledge as much as we can. Alrighty, so here we are in orbit above it. Now, like I said before, I think the easiest place to go first is a flat kind of terrain, a flat biome, which we have here at Savannah. This is so when we're looking around for traits, we can basically, from a very far distance, there's a better chance we can see what that trait is. Like if it's a natural location or a life science location, we can see if it's one we haven't been to, or we can see if it's one we have been to. And we can do so without having to run all the way over to it. If we're in something like a dense jungle or something like that, that can be uh, more challenging. So as you can see, we've got zero out of 10 fauna, zero out of 10 flora. We've got zero out of eight resources and zero out of three traits. So let's land. As soon as I get out of my ship, I'm going to start a timer just so we can kind of keep track of how hopefully quickly we're doing this. Landing struts primed, retros firing. Okay, we've landed and I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm actually gonna land in a different spot just for the video's sake. There's currently a sandstorm, which uh, makes for some really boring viewing. So I still wanna do the Savannah. 
We just need to find another savannah spot. Mountains. Savannah, okay. Is that savannah? That's a swamp. Doesn't look particularly savannery there, but all right. Let's see what happens. Beginning landing cycle. Much better. Okay, so we can see what's happening. All right, exiting the ship, and I'll start the timer. All right. First thing we're going to do is pull up the scanner and look what for natural things and life signs. So there's a natural thing there. There's a structure there. We don't want that. Structure. What's that? Natural and life signs. Okay, so we might get all three traits in this one landing. Let's grab these resources. There we go. We've got four of eight resources already. Grab that guy. Grab that plant. Grab you. Probably won't be stopping to fight stuff. Just for speed's sake. Okay, we've got that bug. He's done. So, well... Rather than heading out and about to find plants and animals, first we'll find all of the traits because on the way to them, we can scan the plants and animals and resources. Uh, doing pretty good here. We've got one of the fauna and four of the resources. Just a minute in. Now having that 50 meter scan range is very helpful. So we don't have to run all the way over to each thing to scan it. We can do it from quite a distance. Okay, there's tons of stuff. Oh, I've got some flying dudes. Level 100, Jesus. It's kind of hard to pinpoint, but there we go. Flying jellyfish dudes are fully scanned. Okay, 200 meters away. There's another life science probably. That's one and a half kilometers away. I don't really want to be doing that. After we get this one, we'll probably head back to the ship. Ah, is this the one with three? No, good, it's got one. So we found a trait already. Very good. Get the dung pile, very good. Oops, bring up the scanner and we'll travel back to the landing area. Just because the other natural and life sign locations were on the other side of the ship this way. And on the way, we'll get these guys. And see we're making use of that big highlighted resource area on the grounds rather than having to find the actual node silver do we have that whoa what happened there the hell was that i have not seen that before okay we've got these pack tusk frogs there we go we got them 100 percent Ah, now we can see that we have the fauna for this biome completed. Okay, we've got that plant. So what's left? A couple of plants, it seems. Oh yeah, we can see them. The blue fellas. Whoa. What is going on with that? So weird. Okay, six out of eight resources. Very good. We're only four minutes in. Literally just hit four minutes. Here is a second trait. Probably scan it from here. 100% scan, 200% XP. We've got two out of three traits. Not even five minutes in. Uh, just have a quick look around the base for a dung pile or a rock pile like this. Plenty of loot. Very nice. That's 
it's quite rare to get that much loot out of a rock pile or a dung pile. Alright. So we'll make our way to this life sign. So what do we have? We had the ditch with the white spiky things and we had that big rock. So unfortunately from here we can't really see what that is. Okay, it looks like some kind of grovey forest thing. So we know that we haven't been to that trait. So this will be a new trait. Third and final trait. Do you see anything useful? Would have been nice if these traits were a bit closer together, but oh well. Actually, I can see some blue in there. It might be some plants in there that we haven't got yet. Unexplored chemistry feature. Okay. Grab that plant. So we need to scan this twice. So there's one. There's two there. There we go. Got it. Easy peasy. And we've got that plant as well. There's still um, a plant we don't have. There we go. Okay, we've got fauna. For this biome complete, we've got flora for this biome complete, and we have all three traits, and we're just six and a half minutes in. So we don't even need to go back to the ship. We're done with the savannah biome. So let's go to the tropical forest. We've got 29% there. So we don't need to look for traits now. We just need to look for fauna and flora and those last two resources. All right, here we go. But I just saw a resource come up that we don't have. Yep, cool. We've got seven out of eight resources and all these new plants. Like to find some fauna though. Lots of plants, no fauna. Here we go. Some little scavengers. What are you shooting? Caterpillars. Okay, we've got that. We've got that plant. I think there's some blue there. What is that? Oh man, it's a huge pack of whatever that is, but we got it now. Uh, there's a resource there we don't have. There we go. So we've got all the resources now. We've got the flora for this biome completed. We are just missing the fauna. But what are we missing? Got all the caterpillars, we got those dudes. Oh, Andresia. I haven't scanned her. Alright, we can see some blue over here. Oh, that's weird. A plant, even though we've finished the floor for the biome. Well, don't know what that means, but uh, we'll scan it because it's blue. There we go. Okay, apparently it is a plant that we've now completed. It's just not from this biome. Oh, the game thinks it's not from the biome. Oh, we've got some long neck dudes. Just need one more of them. Again, I'll normally go a bit slower and like fight them and stuff, but um, more flora. Okay. Oh, we've actually changed biome. We're in a different biome to the one we entered. I mean, that's fine. It saves the fast travel. Is that a long neck dude? Oh, it's a long neck cactus. The hell is that? Okay, so there's one plant left, which I think is this long cactus thing. 
frigid palm. So we need one more frigid palm, and then we have all of the floor for the planet. Now, hunting dodo. That's new. Now, these guys look pretty tough, and they're all super high level, so I'm um, very thankful that we have the 50 meter scan range. All right, one more of these guys. Okay, perfect. So we've got biome complete for fauna and flora. So we've got all the traits, all the resources, all the flora. We just need three more fauna and we're done. And we're just 10 and a half minutes in. And don't forget, this is the most daunting surveying challenge I could find. Tropical forest. Savannah's 100%, mountains 100%. Tropical forest seems to be at 86%. Swamp coastal is at 70%. Let's try... You know what, let's... I have a suspicion that two of the remaining fauna are in the ocean. So let's find a coastal spot. There we go, we can see we've got swamp coastal. And because we have to walk a little distance from the landing spot to the beach. I'm hoping that we can run into whatever that extra missing fauna is. That isn't the ones that I think are in the ocean. Um, so again, the direction we're facing should be the ocean. Oh, what was that? It's like a chicken noise. I don't remember hearing that before, but nothing blue okay given there's a structure there um i don't think that is the direction of the ocean just going with gut instinct here i think the lowest point in the land oh okay it's probably this way that's weird i i tested this like five times and every time the way the ship and my character was facing was always pointing directly at the ocean but this time it's not. So apparently that's a, a fallacy. Now, obviously if the horizon dips down and in all the other directions, there's mountains everywhere, the ocean's gonna be in the bit where it dips down, right? Let me just really quickly check. Where are we? We're down here. So north is... So the beach is basically south slash south west. Now on the compass, I'm pretty sure that big marker is north. So that's south and that would be southwest. So yeah, this way-ish. I can hear a lot of, like, tropical bird noises. But I don't see... Oh, is that something blue there? My eyes deceive me. What the... That is a scary noise, whatever that is. heat okay cool there's the ocean unfortunately we didn't run into whatever that other fauna is but I'm hoping that there's two fauna in the ocean from my experience every time there are creatures in the ocean there's always two there's never one there's never three there's always two so I'm really hoping that there are creatures in this ocean, because that would get us two. Oh, what's that? Ha. Huh. And your scan shows 
I'm hoping where there's one caterpillar, there's more caterpillars. Yes, there we go. Perfect. The plan worked after all. Okay, so we just have two fauna left, which I'm hoping are the ones in the ocean. I've never seen ocean animal on beach before, but okay. So now let's get the scanner up, which was already up. And we can see... How's this ocean, by the way? Is it safe? Oh, it is safe. This is the first friendly ocean I've come across. Okay, there's a whale shark there. And again, we can scan ocean stuff from quite the distance. So this is what, a shark whale, and there's some kind of manta ray thing that's on the beach. Just need to find more of those, and we're good. Oh, there's plenty of fellas out here. Come on. Okay, we've got them. We just need the manta ray things. And there is some kind of bug. As you can see, we've 100% scanned all the flora. Of, and even when we hover over that, it says 100% scanned. But for whatever reason, it's showing up as blue. Sure, I'll get the XP twice. Thank you. So we just need the manta rays. Lots of shark whales. <laughs> Bloody hell. Where are these... ...in stingrays? There's two of them. Oh! That's all we needed. There we go. 100% done. That was in 16 minutes and 40 seconds. 16 minutes and 40 seconds is all it took to fully survey Zeta of Fichu 1, which had 10 fauna, 10 flora, 8 resources, and 3 traits. 16 minutes, 40 seconds. So, as you can see, when you apply some know-how with a whole bunch of tips and tricks, you can actually conquer what at face value Seems to be like the most daunting task possible in just over 15 minutes. Easy peasy. And we should now have a sort by value. That's an easy way to do it. There we go. Zeta of Feature 1 survey data, 40,000 credits, which we should be able to sell to Vladimir Sol for 12,750 credits. 15 minutes for 12k and a bunch of XP and if I took my time a little bit and fought some things and looted some plants and stuff get a whole bunch of resources as well so yeah easy peasy I hope you now see how how truly easy and potentially relaxing scanning and surveying planets is and of course it is quite lucrative so, now you know everything there is to know about scanning and surveying planets in Starfield. I do hope that you have found this helpful, and I'd love to know what other secrets or advice you have for myself and other players. Starfield is colossal, but it's also filled with a million tiny details and hidden things, and I'd love to hear about what you find or figure out. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Be sure to check out my other videos via the Starfield playlist link down in the description. Down there, you can also find all of my social media links. Be sure to check all of them out as well. And if you would like to support my channel in a more personal way, please feel free to leave a super thanks right here on YouTube. It would be greatly appreciated. And with that, I've been Camel. I would like to thank you very much for watching. I would like to thank you very much for supporting my channel. And I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.